Kristen with Collision Hub, and we're back on the last day at NACE, and I have another special guest in the booth today, Mr. Rick Turry. How are you today? Great, Kristen. How are you? I am wonderful. You look a little different without the hat and the glasses from the CIF party. I left them in the room. Uh, I got to tell you, that was a great for a, a fundraiser for the Collision Industry Foundation. Uh, they did a little uh, blues guitar, a little old rock and roll. Did that. We did that. Yeah, with my buddy Rod Rocket Enlow. That was uh, that was great. Yeah. I was not Thank expecting you. it, and you guys, uh, you guys really pulled that off. Well, if we were going to do the Blues Brothers, I said, we, 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 "Okay, Rod, I'll do the Blues Brothers, but we got to do Rawhide." <laughs> I, so I, I had to do Rawhide. I was there for that song. It Thank did not escape much, yeah. me. Um, it, it actually played off very well. How was the fundraiser? Have you heard anything about what the final numbers or anything was? I've heard it's uh, it's uh, in the five figures. Uh, uh, that's a rumor at this point, not confirmed. But I've heard we had someone around 100 people. Oh, yeah, I believe uh, yeah, it was over 100, expecting some more, and then it almost doubled from what it RSVP. And we might have broken the 10,000 barrier. <laughs> so oh. thanks to all the people that donated you know, for the silent auction, and thanks to all the people for coming. Oh, that's just, it's such a great, um, it's a great industry organization that we have, and they do some great things, and so it's always nice when we can do those things when we're together. So. And we can have some fun. Well, we did have some fun and some amazing desserts. Yep, so absolutely. It was good. Well, tell me a little bit about what's going on with Autotex this year at the show. You guys have got a booth, and you've got a little bit of some, some new things for us to check out this year. We've got a booth, uh, and uh, we're, we're ready for anybody that wants to come along. Uh, we're, we're kind of um, we're pivoting on 3D graphics. Uh, we found that uh, at first we thought it, it, might, it might be a helpful tool, and every time we show it to somebody, they give us new ideas that we could do in 3D. Uh, we introduced 3D last year. And you can, if you're not familiar with 3D, you can zoom in on the parts. You can spin them so you can get a look at all the parts in any zone. Wow. Uh, you can isolate the parts, unlimited zoom. Uh, and, and, and as you select parts in the estimate, they, they code, they're coded by color. So you can tell which parts have been selected in the estimate and which haven't. Now we're, co we're color coding substrate. Interesting. So you'll be able to kind of at first glance kind of tell when you have a high streak steel or, or another issue that you need to take care of. Absolutely. All you need is a key and you'll know exactly what kind of substrate you're dealing with. We've got, I, I think, high strength steels are in blue. Carbon fiber has its own color. Aluminum has its own color. So you'll know just at a glance what kind of parts you're dealing with. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit on why um, sub, you know, substrate identification is so important just in the estimating process, not just specifically for the repair? Oh, yeah. It, 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 it's critical because some of the substrates just can't be repaired. That, like carbon fiber, if you've got the weave pattern on a carbon fiber part and you've got a scratch, you're probably going to have to buy a new one. So it's good, it's good to know that up front before I get into a collision repair facility, even if I'm an insurer, I want to know that up front. Right. Uh, when it comes to dealing with the, with the high strength metals, uh, ICAR has a great demonstration that their, that their man, I think Steve Marks, put together. And it shows what happens when you overheat the wrong kind of steel. And, and it shows exactly uh, how far the steel will bend. It shows how, how the, he, he can prove to you that the metals actually respond differently. So it's critical not to overheat the ultra high strength steels. And dealing with aluminum is, is pretty much the same way. Right, and sometimes it, and with some of it, if we are going to do some repairs, some of the different substrates, we would need to have kind of some additional repair times there for the uh, technician to be able to work that metal. Yeah, and it gets even stickier when you're dealing with aluminum. You have to have a complete uh, isolated uh, uh, work space. You cannot uh, cohabit uh, uh, aluminum with steel. That's great. So being able to visually identify in the estimating system those substrates can really improve your proficiency in your estimatics and maybe lower some supplement rates. I think it's kind of important to know what you're getting into up front as opposed to finding out at the tail end. So absolutely, supplements are eliminated, workflow is, 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 is improved. We found the 3D graphics is actually saving three to five minutes per estimate in some cases. Not might not sound like a lot, but if you're writing six million estimates a year, time adds up. Yeah, uh, it does. Yep. That's almost a year, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> daylight savings. There's too many zeros for me to yeah, count. Yeah, no, no. I I get there. We're shop people, we're not math people, right? <laughs> I'm not so bad, but I'm not that good. So what else is uh, what else is new from uh, Autotex, a Solera company that uh, we Solera, can think for? Well, uh, uh, on the Solera side, people sometimes confuse Autotex with Solera, and Solera recently relocated to Dallas. So now I can tell people Autotex in, in San Diego and San Ramon, Solera in Dallas. Now the good news from Solera is, and some of you might have read about this, uh, some people may have heard about it. Solera uh, donated fifty thousand dollars to the Education Foundation, uh, the Collision Repair Education Foundation from ICAR. Solera donated fifty thousand dollars to match Tony Aquila's personal donation of fifty thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. So that's a total of a hundred thousand to that's the uh, to the ICAR Ed Foundation. To the ICAR Ed Foundation, a hundred thousand dollars, fifty from Tony personally and fifty from uh, uh, Solera. That's an amazing commitment. I think uh, I've, I've had a little bit of time to talk to Tony, and, and as a leader of your company, he definitely has a 
dedication to the technicians and the future of this industry, which is, is so refreshing to see. Tony is the leader of this company, and we're marching to a billion dollars in revenue. We do business in 53 countries. We have, we have, we have majority market share uh, around the world. And, and Tony's not just the, uh, a leader of the company. He's really the leader of yeah. the company. He's the man that put the plan together. And he's quite a success story. If you've ever talked to Tony, you'll find out he started in this business uh, uh, pushing a broom in a shop. Wow. And I, I heard that from, uh, I had a chance to meet with some of the people from NABC. And they have just nothing but, you know, great things to say. And that's the story they love so much to tell is that he truly does know the industry from the bottom to the top. You want to see yeah, absolutely from the bottom of the floor yeah. to the top of the building. Yeah, that's and, great. Yeah, he, he's been both places. I think he likes it better where he is now. And, and, he, and, and he did that with a lot of hard work and with a lot of, a lot of help from his friends. And he really wants to pay back the industry as much as he possibly can. Anything else that, uh, you know, Audit Tech's a Solera company is going to be uh, bringing down the pipe for us uh, in the next uh, few months or so? Yes, we're going to have a solution to a little, uh, to, to, uh, to an issue that we addressed in the database, but we kind of jumped the gun on, the, on, on the prep time for uh, raw, unprimed bumper covers. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, some people might have read about it. We deployed it in September and we, we rescinded it in October. And it was simply a communication uh, a breakdown uh, between us and our, and our clients and the industry. So we made a commitment to our clients in the industry that we wouldn't introduce anything new without telling you first. So there we, there we go, introducing something new and we didn't tell you first. So we took it back, but now we're going to tell you how we're going to how we're going to handle it. And we're committed to bringing the the, uh, the issue to resolution, uh, announcing a plan within the next couple of weeks. That's great. There's so many extra steps to those raw bumpers for either the prepper or the painter to go through to get them ready. Just did accept the paint. So. Absolutely. And I've talked with probably 50 people, at least 50 people about this in the past week and a half. I, I uh, facilitate and, uh, and, and, and host our technical advisory council for Autotex. We have repairers and insurers in the same room. We got them in the room. We're 99% we're, we're uh, uh, hard down on the solution for this one. So keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, right. We have a plan and I believe everyone's really going to like it. Right. It'd be nice to have something that we finally kind of can all agree that we like in the industry. <laughs> well, yes, and I found out that we're all in violent agreement on this one. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, yeah, it's um, really good. Are you going to help? I mean, one of the one of the hardest parts about after the bumpers are refinished is, is telling what the substrate is. Is the program going to help us identify when we're estimating that that is a substrate that we need to put that extra procedure on? We are going to. Uh, we have a method within the database where when a manufacturer tells us that the bumper cover comes raw and unprimed. We're going to build that into the system. So you'll only see that line item when we know, uh, the, I, this is the proposed solution, I'm pretty sure we're going to go there. You, uh, uh, you'll only see the, the uh, line item when we know the bumper comes that way. Oh, when great. we know it comes that way, we want to tell you up front as opposed to at the end of the process. So uh, it's going to be in a, kind of almost built in like an included operation. So instead of it having to be something that the, or the adjuster or the shop estimator has to add as a secondary step, the, the software will be intuitive for them in that. It'll be a selectable box. It'll pop up and say, do you want to enable this? Oh. All you have to do is click on the box and get it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, anything else? I mean, you guys are just coming out. We got 3D graphics. We got color identifiable stroke substrates. And now we're going to have a fix for our raw bumper issue. Yeah, absolutely. So I, mean, I think that's pretty good. Uh, it, it's hard to go beyond that. Uh, we do have a list of, of prioritized items that we got from the industry. Again, our technical advisory council. Uh, we've got 10 of them. We've got tech focus that we're working on. A lot of people have heard about it. We're, we're st it's still behind the scenes right now. But, but one of the things that we've got our eye on is repair procedures integrated in the database. We've got a tech focus product that's designed to do that. And you're going to hear more about that later. Oh, that's great. Well, I look forward to it. Promise me that you'll come back and sit down and tell me about that when that's ready. I, I'd love to. Uh, and, and, and the fact of the matter is, that this is another one where we have both insurers and repairers saying, there's one thing we can agree upon. We want repair procedures integrated into the database. All right. It helps, uh, it helps in the estimating process. So. Uh, so much. And I think sometimes we forget that, that when we're out there on the fly, we need those procedures and that information handy. That's why estimating systems could be much more than that. Yeah. You know, with the color of the 3D graphics, some people think, oh, that's a, that's a fun toy. It's more than a fun toy. And by the way, some of the things you can do with 3D graphics, maybe there's animation that we can do later. But as a matter of fact, I know there is. Maybe we could actually give you live action repair procedures on your laptop. Wow. Now, see, y'all got me excited, so the, like, the inner kind of estimating geek in me is going to get out in there and want to go play with a few things. But not bad. we got three new things for a three-day show, so you guys kind of hit the target on that. One per day. What, what more can you ask for? Yeah, it's like the jackpot on the slot machine in Vegas. I'd like to go do that. <laughs> well, I thank you for stopping. I know that you're super, super busy because everybody wants a piece of your time, and we hope that NACE is a, is a great show for you, and I guess we'll see you. Will we see you at SEMA? We will be at SEMA. I will be at SEMA, and I will, of course, be at CIC at SEMA. Exactly. Well, I'll see you there. Thanks, right. sir. Bye. Okay.